So this video is going to start pretty much the same as every other video that starts. Yeah, I was on eBay late at night, you know, doing what I do every night and just scrolling aimlessly down eBay looking for some unknown bargain. It could be anything from a 1970s blender all the way to, you know, some crazy test equipment. But anyway, I digress. It was a late night uh, a couple of weeks ago and I came across something that was truly beautiful. Yeah, it was this thing. But yeah, this is a 1980s Hondo Explorer base. I got it for around a hundred or so pounds. It was a little bit expensive, but I really wanted it. And it came with another extra neck uh, because this one's a bit broken at the top. You can see the actual truss rod has come through, but then I decided to put the original back on because who cares? It's just a, you see, it adds to the character. It adds to the character. But yeah, as you can see, this thing is absolutely awesome. And I bought it sort of without a plan. And yeah, I needed to come up with a plan fast or I'd have a cool ass base just sitting around. And that'll, that'll never do. And then later down the line, I came to the conclusion that I'm going to turn this into a synthesizer. So how am I going to do this? Well, yeah, that got me thinking and I went through a load of different ideas. I was going to build a whole analog synthesizer into the bass body and it just kind of got more and more complicated very quickly. But for the playing style that I kind of like and stuff like that, it's usually only one note on a bass guitar. So it doesn't need to be a polyphonic synth, it can be a monophonic synth. And then I realized the best option to do that would be to use a Commodore 64's SID chip, which is basically a digital analog hybrid synthesizer chip that you can find inside the Commodore 64. And when I said this to a friend, he reminded me of Jerry Ellsworth's bass, which is basically a bass made out of a Commodore 64. Which is pretty amazing and if you haven't seen that before you should definitely check it out No matter how amazing that thing was I still felt I needed to carry on with this because that isn't exactly what I'm after I want a pretty fat gnarly sounding bass thingamajiggy I don't really know what it is and it's got to have loads of knobs So yeah time to build a bass guitar out of a SID chip So how am I going to use the SID chip? Well in fact I'm actually working on a project right now using the SID chip However there are a lot of amazing projects on the internet if you just search up SID chip and synth and stuff like that since this is just a DIY project, we can borrow from these things and just, you know, mess around. One project I actually had bookmarked for a few years now is by an awesome person called Brian Peters who has actually made a lot of different projects using Teensy development boards wired up to different music chips. And there's some links below to the other projects that he's got and he shared all of these projects with some really good manuals. Well, what I did was I started messing around with his uh, SID project. It's basically a Teensy, a Teensy development board, which is just wired straight to all of the addresses in the SID chip. That's basically all it is. And what his code does is it takes the USB MIDI and turns it into readable commands to play the SID chip, which plays music. What I ended up doing was hypothetically getting a rusty screwdriver, this is my bad code, and just kind of <sighs> mashing it up and sort of uh, twisting it around so I could have a few knobs. And then I also made it so I can have normal MIDI. I know that's a lot of words that may not make a lot of sense, but I said them. So yeah, this is the SID chip code, and it sounds like this. Anyway, in between this circuit and the bass, I also need something that converts the bass signal into MIDI commands. And that's where I'm going to use this, the Sonus G2M. I've had this sitting around in a box for a long time because I used this in my old band to kind of play MIDI lines uh, out with my guitar. So basically what I need to do is I need to bash this and this into the bass guitar somehow and put the knobs on a nice big metal pick guard on the front of it or something like that. Do you like my earplugs? Yeah, tissue paper, of course.
Hello! How's it going? There's a hole that goes all the way through. As you can see, I've done the back, I gave it a quick spray, and I've just sprayed the front. And I'm gonna take the masking tape off. Lovely jubbly. Oh yeah. It's a bit of a state of affairs, but nothing that paint couldn't fix. So right here is the circuit board, it's basically the SID chip and the Teensy 2.0++. Here is the Sonus G2M, I've taken it out of this case and I've removed some of the large bits so it's a bit more low profile and it'll actually fit in the back part of the base. This is all connected together so the battery is powering the whole shebang and there's an on switch on the actual panel. So uh, let's uh, just uh, plug it in and see if it works first. Okay, so it is working. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it all inside the bass guitar. So happy with this thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, just look at it. It looks absolutely awesome. I really hope it sounds as awesome as it looks. Uh, let's uh, plug it in, I guess. Oh, time to give it a go. Oh, oh. Oh. If this works, I'm going to be absolutely over the moon. There's a couple of issues. I'm quickly just gonna open this up. I know exactly what's wrong with it. I'm gonna fix the problems. We're gonna have a jam! Oh my god. Okay, I fixed it and it's working. That's only one oscillator, but basically if I do this and then And then we got pulse width modulation. You can change the waveform, so you've got like... <laughs> but then we add a higher octave by adding another oscillator in, this is this switch. And then we also add a lower octave, which is this switch, which is the other oscillator. We got attack and then release. It's a bit funny at times, it's not the most perfect of instruments. Basically, if you look closely, you'll see there's two jack inputs. These mean that I can control the pulse width and the vibrato depth from control voltage inputs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the expression pedal into one of them. It's weird, Malfunction. 
functions. I, I need to do a little bit of work to this. There may be a part two. <laughs> The lower the note is, the longer it takes the machine to kind of figure out what the note is. So it works really well on the top strings and I reckon if this was a guitar it would actually be pretty damn good. So what I may do is make a part two and basically get higher strings. Basically just turn it into a really long guitar. So it's in the higher octave and then it registers it down to the bass notes. I think that'll be when it'll be pretty snazzy. And I reckon there's a lot of potential however, right now, Still, you know, in the in the building figuring it out phase. So that is the Explorer bass that's been made into a synthesizer in your in your in your bass guitarizer. Yeah, it was a very fun project actually. It took me a couple of days and I'm pretty chuffed with it. I do definitely need to do more work to it because it's not perfect by no means. So maybe expect a part two in the uh, synthesizers in the shape of stringed instruments videos. And if you're into music chips from games consoles, I thoroughly recommend you to check out the links to Brian Peters projects uh, down below. I tried to contact Brian but I didn't get a reply so I, I'm not going to be able to share what I've done the modification wise because it's, I, I don't know whether I don't know if it's cool or not. But his version without the knobs you can still control all of the parameters via MIDI CC. Uh, well that's over on his website so go and check that out. It's amazing and the other projects that you have Pretty awesome. I've been talking about this project on my vlogs on Patreon, which are extra vlogs about stuff like this and that over the past week and stuff. And there's also a Patreon live stream coming up this week and there's a vote that has just gone up today to decide which day it's gonna be. If you wanna see highlights from my previous live streams, there are videos of some of them up on my other channel, Look Mum No Computer, but more serious-ish. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. And finally, Cosmo t-shirts are available on my store now. It's pretty awesome because it's my favorite t-shirt. It really smells because I've worn it all week. But you can get one of these if you want. The links are also below. And yeah, I'll stop rambling. And until the next video, I've been Look Mum No Computer. If you want, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and all that just just and remember don't be scared to try it and uh, oh jeez it's heavy